Hey everybody, this is Hogan Brown with Loon Outdoors, and today I'm going to show you how to tie one of my favorite summer striker patterns. I am lucky to be able to live in Northern California where we have year-round striped bass fishing in our delta, lower Sacramento River, the Feather River, Yuba Rivers, all our rivers and estuary systems. And fishing for these big challenging game fish is really similar to fishing for pike, big bass, musky, stripers, and bluefish on the east coast. It's basically freshwater or brackish water big game fishing. And so we fish big bait fish patterns. You know, the analogy big fish eat smaller fish really is true for these. So my pattern's a classic chartreuse over white type of clouser minnow you know, with kind of takes pieces from a lot of different really famous fly tires, you know, but all built off of the Bob Clouser style minnow. And one thing with striped bass is their lateral line is where they feel and sense their prey. So designing a fly that's bulky enough to push water yet not big enough that your client or you feel like you're throwing around a giant wet sock is a challenge when designing these flies. So I'm going to show you how to create a fly that pushes some water. It's going to move some stripers or predatory fish to the fly. And at the same time, isn't going to beat you up too bad when you're throwing it on the front of the boat. Let's get started. All right, to start us this pattern, we're going to start obviously with a hook. And we use the Arex 60 bent streamer in 4 aught. This is the PR370. Heavy wire, 60 degree jig hook in four aught. Now I tie this down to a two aught and even smaller into a one aught for uh, clear water, thinner water, and fish that may just not want that big of a fly. But to start with, I always want to throw the big one. So I'm going to start with throwing just some white 140 Vivas thread. I like white for all my striper flies or big bait fish because it's going to take color and resin if I need to add it. Next, I'm going to add some lead eyes. These are extra large. Real eyes from Hairline. Again, I like the extra large. You can use the large, okay? But the size and weight of those lead eyes is really going to change how that fly swims and moves. Next thing, I'm going to give it a flash tail. I'm going to use just pearl flashaboo. I'm going to grab a pretty good size hunk off of this and set it out usually much longer than I'm going to need it so I can trim it and kind of cut that fly to length and shape. Trim that excess. Use my vice pawn to tack that down the top of my regal rotary vice. Comes with a nice magnet right there for that. One thing, if you're tying on a regal vice, you have that magnet, and then you have another spot back there if you're gonna tie a really long fly to use our vice pond to kind of tack that material and keep it out of the way. Next thing to add onto this tail, I'm gonna take some FF SF blend, Steve Farrar blend. This is the silver scale white. It's got a little bit of UV pearl, a little bit of silver, and definitely a lot of white. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna set it right on top, kind of measure it out, and again, I am gonna trim this fly to fit. Tack it right to the top, trim it, get that vice pawn up, tack it down, flip it over. Nice to have a rotary vice to do this with. I did not for an incredibly long time. And I would have to take the fly out, flip it over. It took me a lot longer. Uh, next, I'm going to use Steve Farrar Chartreuse. Here, it's got a little UV in it, take it, set it right on top, just like the white, 
And with shorter or smaller flies, you may not need to add this addition to the tail. You could just run with straight flashaboo out the back. Pull it forward. Set it under my vice pond. Trim it off. Then, I'm going to take a smaller section, maybe like five or six. I always, I always take a little more because I don't like to run out of space. Strands of that pearl flashaboo. I'm going to tie it in. And I'm going to take it and wrap it around all that. This is a technique that I first saw, probably one of the the Delta Legends or California Striped Bass Legend fly tires Steve Adachi do. And uh, it is a small detail, but you know, in a lot of things, small details mean usually result in big results or in this case, big fish. So I wrap that around, gives it a nice kind of bulk, tack it down, then I'm gonna take our UV clear fly finish, this is thin, and I'm just gonna liberally apply this to the center over all that flashaboo. And what this does is this is really a durability issue with a lot of bass flies in that hit it with our infinity light, lock it in, Bass species, stripers, largemouth, smallmouth, whatever, even our salty bass, have really rough lips. If you, you know, give you a nice bass thumb. But when they eat that fly, they grind on that center. And I was noticing, and it made sense as soon as I saw Steve do this, that tears up. If you just have thread right there, Man, you know, a couple fish, a couple violent head shakes, that area gets really tore up and then the fly is done. And so adding that little extra step creates a nice, durable uh, middle of the fly. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim this flash tail a little bit. Kind of take the tail, look at it, make sure it's a little trimmer. And I always have a fly from the boat kind of measure it out, go, okay, yep, I'm being consistent about size. And put that vice pawn back there. Now I'm gonna start on the front. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some white snow runner. Okay, this is kind of a substitute that I've been using for synthetics. I'm going to take a nice clump of this. And one thing that why I'm not running just synthetics on this fly is that to build bulk with synthetic material, you have to add volume. Okay. And so the bulkier you want to fly, the more material traditionally you have to add. So I cut off a piece of this, kind of pull out the fuzz and down on the underneath. And so I'm left with this nice long part. So that to get that amount of bulk using synthetics, I'd have to add a lot of material. This is stiff fiber. Okay, this is not going to compress as easy as say Ferrar blend or some of the synthetics. So it's going to make a much bulkier fly without bulking the fly up with a bunch of material. Pack that in, use my precision tip scissors to really trim that head at an angle to keep that nice kind of tapered classic Clouser head. Take that, throw it under the vice pond. Then I'm going to take a little bit of that white scale, take it right on top just 
just like that. Not much, just add a little bit of flash into it. I'm going to take that, trim it. Now, again, with the idea of adding bulk or stiff material, I'm going to take just some white bucktail. Not a lot, okay? Not a normal, like, overwing clouser style. Just a little bit. Trim it off. I'm going to set this right on top, and I'm going to tie it in using a technique that I saw Captain Maury Hatch and Captain Andy Gebord use. So, tie it right in on top, right in like this, and basically what I do is I figure eight wrap it around the eyeballs, and it kind of pins it back, creating a little bit nicer profile, I think. I can even pinch it there, and then I take another little spot of that Ferrar blend, lay it over using the same technique, giving it that kind of cross wrap on top of the eyes, and sliding that nice angled cut. And Smash that head all down, and then I have that bottom of the fly. And this, at this point, you can kind of look at it, see if you need to trim any of it up, but you got a nice, bulky, beefy fly to push some water, and at the same time, not gonna cast like a wet sock. So spin that over. Now it's basically a mirror with a little bit of addition, okay? I'll throw a little, little chartreuse right down the middle. Then I'm gonna take some of the UV, or excuse me, chartreuse snow runner. Okay, kinda even out, get a nice little clump together. Kind of straighten it out. Like that. Again, look at it, kind of pull some of that fuzz out. If you're a very economic fly terrier, you got a bunch of dubbing right there you could use. Set it right on top. Pin that down on top of that head. Use those precision tip scissors to get in there and just really cut that tight. Kind of pull that back. At that point I'm going to give it some side gills. Just going to be some hot pink crystal flash. I'm always big on throwing, and uh, this is definitely something I picked up on my own, but Andy Geeboard and Captain Maury Hatch, two great striper fly tires, talk always about lateral lines. And so throwing a distinctive lateral line on a bait fish pattern is really important. And it, you know, can be black or it can be hot pink. And since it's stripers, it's hot pink. Then I'm gonna take a little bit, just keep building this, a little UV chartreuse for our blend. Right over the top, take a few fibers. There's no right or wrong amount. Just set it over there. And at this point, I'm going to take some chartreuse bucktail. Again, not your normal like clouser wing style or a mount. Just a few fibers to add a little bit of a head to it, that kind of frontal cone that's going to 
give it a nice push when you pull it through the water. Just tie it right on top. Take those precision tip scissors, slide them right in there. Kind of clean up that head. Then take one last clump of Chartreuse SF Blend, and this can be a little bigger than the ones you've been putting in, because this is going to be the last kind of overwing. Take it and tie it right onto the top of the fly. all of that back, kind of clean up that head. Then you can use your thread to build up that taper, or I'm gonna show you a way with resin that you can make even the most ugly, ratty heads look good. which when you're tying them quick in the morning before you get out on the river for a trip, helps. All right, tie that off and we'll see. Pull this out of the vise, give it a little inspection, make sure it looks the way we want it to look and then I'll show you how to create a nice head. So what I'm looking for when I pull it out is that kind of taper. Does it have that nice bait fish profile? And I'll always kind of comb it out here. And I'll take some scissors and kind of trim it. Sure those lateral lines are about as long as I want them. Get that nice kind of conical shape. Okay, then I'll put it back in the vise, flip it over, and then take some UV fly finish in red. And I'm going to fill in the little corner behind the eyes. Going to help me make underside of a gill plate. Then flip it over. Do the same thing on this side. Kind of come around. Do the underside. Let it cook. Now obviously you don't have to do this on every fly, but it seems like I did this once and the fly fished really well. And so now if I don't do it, I don't have confidence in the fly. In essence, creating more work for myself. Next, I'm gonna take UV fly finish in white and hot yellow. Okay, and at first, I'm gonna take this hot yellow and kind of paint it down the side. Go over the top. And again, like I said, when you do this, it doesn't really matter how your thread wraps look because you're coating them. Then hit that with that infinity light, bake it in. These colored resins usually will take a little longer to cook as I say, so give it a little bit longer than you would with the clear resins. And then kind of the test is give it a squish. And if any resin comes out, give it another little cook.
Then take our white and do the underside. Hold it up, hit it up with the light. Give it a cook, kind of squeeze it, make sure it's all right. Then I take the thin and I give the whole thing a nice wash of thin to even out any lumps or imperfections and just seal that all in there. There you go. If you got some predatory fish in your backyard, I recommend tying up a few of these. Tie it to your color. I mean, obviously you can tie this fly in any color combination you want. Your bait fish and uh, whatever your bait fish is, tie it to match or tie it in, you know, chartreuse and white. If it's not chartreuse and white, it's no use. That's what they say. All right, Hogan Brown with Loon Outdoors. Have a great day.